So we're here at the top of New Plymouth. It used to be a pass site and then was taken up as a place uh, in the New Zealand Wheels. Yeah, this was originally uh, Pukaka Pa. It was renamed by the settlers Martin Hill. And in 1909, a national monument to all of those who fought in the New Zealand Wars is erected here. All of those except the Māori that they fought against. really shows you about the time because I counted 23 naval vessels were involved in those wars and on the other side it talks about 13 different regiments so it gives you a good insight into the you know the whole British Empire was here basically. It does because people assume that the British contribution to the New Zealand wars was through the army but actually the, the navy played a huge role in the New Zealand wars as well. The original monument, when it was erected in 1909, had a colonial soldier on the top who was toppled in about 1991 on Waitangi Day. What does that tell you? Well, I think it speaks to the unease about what this monument represents and the silences around it, and particularly the silences about the Māori who fought in the New Zealand Wars who aren't acknowledged on the site in any way, um, even though this was originally a significant pass site for local Māori. I think the other point I, I recognise is this was erected in 1909 and just a few years later, a decade later, they're asking Māori to fight for this country in the First World War. That's right. I mean, this is erected at a time when you've got a sort of renewed militarism in the country uh, preparing for eventual war and also a kind of nostalgia about the pioneering period and a lot of these old soldiers are, are kind of dying and this is a time when there's a great deal of, of kind of myth-making around the New Zealand wars, and you can kind of see that in, in this monument mm. itself. You know, some would say, leave it, because it's history. Others would say, make it right. I mean, what do you think? In general, I tend to think that the best response is to contextualise these monuments and provide additional information about them. and you know, to correct those omissions um, around the narrative of them. Because it does give you a narrative, one narrative, that you think uh, that this is all there was. It does. It's also, I mean, it's kind of a, it speaks to a time and it is, you know, significant in itself for what it tells us about the mindsets of Pākehā in the early 20th century and how they were thinking about the New Zealand wars. If I was a descendant of Te Atiawa Māori, I would feel uh, hard done by standing here at the top of this moment, looking at this, because I wouldn't feel like I was represented. I, I guess that's why the soldier was toppled from the top. True. So murderous, uh, hostile. This one, Hugh Harris was cruelly murdered by the rebel Māori at Waitara. Yeah, it's, it's remarkably strong language, isn't it? Which kind of speaks to a mindset that all of these references to rebel Māori, to murder and so on, there's kind of this idea that it was a crown fighting a just war rather than Māori. Mm. And I guess if you didn't have the full story, and this is the only narrative uh, that you stroll past, you know, you would be forgiven for thinking that it was a one-sided war. Yeah, that's right.
Well, this is quite a contrast. Um, a single headstone on the furthest corner of the church grounds. Yeah, you couldn't get any further away, away really, and this is where uh, a number of Rangatira are buried. And it was considered too offensive to bury them with the British and Crown soldiers in the cemetery. So they're in the grounds of the vicarage. As you say, the furthest corner of the church property. I think if I was a descendant of Te Atiawa or a descendant of Wetine Taiporutu, I would feel like my rangatira, my ancestors, hadn't been respected being all the way over here. Yeah, I mean, not only are they far from their homelands in the Waikato, but also within the church grounds. It's, you know, they're, they're kind of tucked away in a corner here on their own. It's, it's kind of a, a lonely memorial in many yeah. respects. Yeah. The site of the redoubt where up to 50 Māori and 16 soldiers died in vicious hand-to-hand -hand combat is almost invisible today. This is an interesting location, Vincent. It is. So tell me, it's a commemoration for round about 40 or so Māori who uh, perished. Yeah, this was a, a cross erected in 1941 to commemorate um, at least 40 Māori killed um, on the 23rd of January 1861. Their sapping operations had begun December 1860 and as they inched closer to the Māori position at Te Arai, uh, Pukirangi Ora, they built redoubts along the way. Mm. And so this was an attack at dawn on the 23rd of January, led by Lauri Maniapoto, and it was a very daring attack on the redoubt itself. And what they were trying to do really was disrupt the British sapping operations because they were gradually getting closer and closer to their target. Um, and, you know, this is a site of one of the biggest losses of Māori uh, of the entire Taranaki War. When you consider the iwi that lost their lives here, they weren't te atiawa, they were here to support them. Raukaua, uh, uh, Ngāti Awa, Ngāti Mahuta, Maniapoto, Ngāti Haua, these uh, iwi that would, in two years' time, uh, also f face off against uh, the Crown. That's right. So, you know, uh, Maniapoto and other iwi are here um, assisting Taranaki Māori, and years later, because the Crown feels that the issues in contention here about who's in control are not resolved, they determine to attack Waikato and Maniapoto. You know, as someone who grew up in rural New Zealand, every year we came together to remember those who died in the First and Second World War at the Cenotaphs, but just being here makes me feel so sad because no one comes here. This is a very unkept place, it's on private property. They're almost forgotten, yet they were fighting for their lands as well. There's nothing really to indicate that this is the site of major um, loss of life um, mm. during the New Zealand Wars. We're here because of the goodwill of the property owner and um, th there are no signposts on the road, obviously. It's down a private, a private road. A lot of people wouldn't be aware of the fact that it's here. Um, and really, um, apart from the, the tablet that was erected 70 years ago, there's, there's not really any information here either about what took place on the site and why it's significant. It must be, um, you know, not always easy for Māori to visit sites like this when they're on um, on farms that aren't theirs. No, that's right. There's, there's no right to visit this, this site, which is you know, quite remarkable, really. Maturuturuana te ua ngā roi mata. They say when it starts to rain, it's a blessing, so perhaps uh, there's something in that for these 